Hi everybody, I'm Jimmy DeYoung and I'm glad to be able to welcome you to our living room here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're going to be focusing on Bible prophecy as people have a time to be able to study the Word of God because they may be there in their homes trying to fight off the coronavirus as well. It gives you a little bit more time to be able to study the Word of God. What I'm going to do this time, and in this 5 to 10 minute little broadcast we have, we're going to be answering a question from one of our viewers. The question comes and is dealing with a statement made there in Revelation chapter 12 when it refers to the man-child. Somebody sent the question in, who do you believe the man-child is? Some people believe that may be the church or that may be Israel or something else. Well, I want to look at the overall chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, and we're going to answer your question. The man-child, let me just say at the very outset, is the person of Jesus Christ. And as you dig in to chapter 12, you'll see what I'm talking about. First couple of verses there, you're looking at the dream that Joseph had. That's recorded over in the book of Genesis, chapter 37, starting there with verse 9. And he had a dream. He saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars. Well, that's the father of the Jewish people, the mother of the Jewish people, and then the 11 sons of Jacob. The 12th son, of course, is going to be Joseph. And that was Joseph's dream. Now, that's another time when we may have a study on that. But it is a presentation of Jacob, his wife, and his 11 sons. Two wives, Rachel and Leah, making up all 12 sons of the leader and the father of the Jewish people, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And then you'll read about the red dragon in chapter 12. That's talking about Satan, that old dragon, that serpent himself, Satan. That's who that's talking about. When you read then and you see the man-child there in verses 4 and 5, and as you dig into that, that's talking about Jesus Christ, the man-child who was going to be born to the woman who brought forth the man-child. And of course, Israel, the woman represented as the woman who brought forth the man-child is Israel itself. You'll also read about a place prepared to protect the Jewish people. Chapter 12 and verse 6 is talking about the location of Petra an impregnable city where in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period, the Jewish people are going to be protected when that's where Jesus Christ goes over. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 1 to 6, he goes over to Petra in Edom. There he gathers in those protected Jewish people, protected in the last three and a half years, brings them into Jerusalem and takes them up onto the Temple Mount to rule and reign with him after that. Starting in verse 7 and going through verse 17 of Revelation chapter 12, we see there's going to be an angelic battle in the heavenlies. The Lord is going to take Michael, who's the commander-in-chief of the good angels, and he's going to take Satan and all of the evil angels under the control of Satan and throw them out of heaven. Now, they were thrown out of the third heaven only Satan himself, chapter 12 and verse 10, has access on a daily basis to the throne of God to accuse the brethren. But all the other angels have been either in the first heaven or the second heaven. The first heaven, what you see in the daytime, the sun and the clouds. The second heaven, the stars and the planets out there. And that's the second heaven. That's where the evil angels are now under the leadership and control of Satan, that old serpent, the devil. Well, the battle is going to take place. Michael, the commander-in-chief, the archangel, with the good angels in the heavenlies, throw Satan, that old serpent, that old devil, throw him out and all of his evil angels with him. They come down to the earth. In verse 13 of chapter 12, we see that they then attack the woman who brought forth the man-child. You see, I told you all that we've already talked about to this point to help you understand, the man-child would be that one Jesus Christ. And who brought Jesus Christ forth? That was the woman, the state, the Jewish people, Israel itself. The woman who brought forth the man-child. 
And Satan and all of his evil angels are going to do everything they can to wipe out the woman who brought forth the man-child. You have to read through this passage of Scripture. You'll see that God is going to protect them. That's why they go to Petra. That's why the Lord prepared that special place for them to protect it, the Jewish people. He has a plan for the Jewish people, his chosen people. That plan will not be stopped. Satan's going to do everything he can. Realize this, that if Satan is able to destroy all the Jewish people and using his evil angels to do that, what then happens? Well, the Lord will not be able to fulfill his promises. The Davidic covenant, there'll be a nation forever. The land covenant, they'll have a piece of real estate, 10 times what they have today. Uh, the Davidic covenant, they'll have a temple in Jerusalem. And one of the descendants of King David, Jesus Christ, the man-child, will rule and reign from that. And then the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31, where God brings all of these things into existence. By the way, uh, that new covenant is for the Jewish people. It says in chapter 31, verse 31 of Jeremiah, I give my new covenant to Israel and Judah. That would be the Jewish people. Well, what's going to happen during this seven-year period of time is laid out there in chapter 12. That's why it's so key to study the entire chapter. Oh, just recently, there was a date honored and commemorated in Israel. It's called Holocaust Remembrance Day. They do that once a year. They started that practice back in 1949 to honor the six million who were killed during the Nazi uprising and the killing of all the Jewish people that they could at that time before they were stopped under Hitler and his Nazi regime. Well, they today will stop. A, a siren sounds all across the nation for two minutes. And for those two minutes, every Jew in Israel will stand at attention to honor those six million that were killed during the Holocaust. Now, going back to what Satan and all the evil angels are going to endeavor to do there in the tribulation period, as foretold in the book of Revelation chapter 12, as they try to kill all the Jews so God will not be able to keep his promise to them, we see that Zechariah the prophet, he talked about that, Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8, where it says, during that tribulation period, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that two out of every three Jews will be killed. Two out of every three. There's approximately 14 million Jews. In the first Holocaust, one-third of those were killed. And that would be out of 18 million back in World War II. That would be six million, which would be one-third. In this next Holocaust, Talk to us about, in the book of Zechariah 13 and verse 8, two out of every three will be killed. And that's talking about 9 million out of 14 million, 9 million will be two out of every three Jews to be killed. It's a terrible time coming. In fact, I would suggest that if you have a Jewish friend, you might want to share with them what the Bible, what the ancient Jewish prophet John had to say in the ancient Jewish prophet Zechariah. You see, they would believe the Old Testament prophet, maybe not the New Testament prophet John, but both of them confirm what God's word through these Jewish prophets have said, not only to us, but to the Jewish people. Warn your Jewish friend about the worst Holocaust ever to come, coming up in that seven-year tribulation period. But let me again remind you, what's the blessed hope? the glorious appearing of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. He will come in the clouds. He will shout. All of us who know him as Lord and Savior will be caught up to meet him in the air. Would in this time, with the coronavirus pandemic intensifying across the world, would not this be a great time for the rapture to take place? I, I, I'd actually say any time would be a great time for the rapture. In fact, it could take time, take place rather, at any time. It could take place in the moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's what God's word has to say. Well, I'm excited about the rapture of the church. I keep reminding you the rapture is the next event. It's the blessed hope because I want you to keep looking up. 
not worrying about what's going on, but looking up, waiting for the rapture. And again, it could happen today. And having said that, nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until.